What's up everybody, Joe Davin again with Healthcare Solutions Team, Healthcare Made Simple, bringing you another What the Healthcare video. Because if you ain't saying what the hell, trying to figure this mess out, Obamacare and subsidies, then you are just doing something right, man, because it's taken me five years and I'm finally just about there, okay? Now listen, uh, I always want to do what's best for the client. You could learn all this and watch this video or you can always call me, my number's going to be attached or, or at the bottom of the video. You call me and, and we'll take care and go through this whole situation in five to 10 minutes, okay? But let's talk subsidies. Most people out there have no idea how it works and it really depends on uh, three things that come into play. Your income, your household size, and the federal poverty level chart, and I'll explain that at the end, okay? So I think the best way to go through this and, and keep it somewhat short is to highlight it the, the way I would discuss it with a client, okay? Open enrollment is coming up in November. Most people are gonna be looking at their options for next year. So when I get on the phone with them, I'm gonna say, listen, for me to do the right thing for you, we should first determine if we can get any of that government money, right? And see if, if you can qualify for any assistance through the Obamacare program. First thing I need, what is your income, Mr. and Mrs. Customer? And when I say income, what I mean is this pretty little word that the government calls MAGI, Modified Adjusted Gross Income. What is MAGI? That's, that would be the next question. Well, MAGI is Projected Adjusted Gross Income plus any non-tax social security, plus then there's some foreign income and, and things of that nature that 99% of people are never gonna have, okay? Now, let me stop here. When I ask this number, why I put projected is we are looking at the following year's number. If I'm in open enrollment in November for next year's plans, we have to try to guess or project next year's income. That's very important. We are not asking about what you are doing this current year, okay? So, um, I'm, you know, usually a client's gonna give me a number. If they're self-employed, it's kind of tough to figure that number out. So, so work with your accountant. We wanna try to be as accurate as possible here, okay? Second step, how big is your household? If you're in a house uh, uh, by yourself, you file taxes single and you're making 80,000, the government says, yo, you're probably doing well enough. If you're in a family of five making 80,000, the government's gonna say, well, maybe we should uh, subsidize some of that because that money has to be spread amongst more people. It's as simple as that. So what we're looking at when we're talking about household size is anybody that shows up on your taxes. So if you're married, you file jointly, and you must file jointly if you're married. I'll, I'll explain that in one moment. Um, so you file jointly, and, and then however many people show up as your dependents, usually it's gonna be your kids, anybody you claim, and then, you know, I, I've seen circumstances where people are claiming, you know, a parent because they're living with them or, or a grandchild. That will add to your household size, which could in turn raise your subsidy. And, and I think that'll lead us into the federal poverty level chart. So this is a chart you can look up right online on Google. To qualify for a subsidy, your income has to fall somewhere between a 100 and 400% of federal poverty level. Okay, now I hope you guys can see this. I'll try to kind of superimpose the charts on this video. But um, let's take an example. Here's your household size. Let's say it's one. If you are at 100% of federal poverty level, you're making about $12,500 in a given year. So if your income falls within that 100% to 400%, 12,500 to 48,500, you could potentially qualify for subsidy, okay? Simple as that. Let's look at a household of four. If you're making between 25,500 and 100,500, you could qualify for subsidy. And then, you know, the numbers are adjusted if you have more kids or more dependents. Obviously, these income limits will go up, okay? Why did I put 138% in there? Because states that expanded Medicaid, which was supposed to be part of the law, some states did it, mainly the you know, Democratic states, uh, some states did not do it. But if you were on a state like, for instance, Illinois, that did expand Medicaid, your income has to be above 138% federal poverty level because the government wants to make everything confusing. So you would have to be between 16,500 and 48,500. So if your income is lower than these amounts, you should, in essence, technically be pushed to Medicaid. There are many circumstances where that doesn't happen. Again, for those scenarios, 
work with me. Well, I, again, I know how this system works very well, okay? Um, so again, in a family of four in a state like Illinois, your income would have to be above 34500 to qualify for subsidy. If it is under that number, your family should qualify for Medicaid. Again, many scenarios where Medicaid denies you, and if you do get denied Medicaid, then we could push you back into the marketplace to get subsidy, okay? So in keeping it simple, it, it, it's really, this is kind of the gist of it, okay? A couple of things I want you to take note of. If you are offered work or employer coverage, that does eliminate a lot of people from qualifying for subsidy. And I think I'll make another video on that because it's very technical, okay? Um, now, if you are have kids under 18, these limits go up. So what I mean by that is, and this happens all the time, if you're a couple in, let's say, in your 30s with two kids that are, you know, let's say, eight years old, um, oftentimes the, the, the adults will qualify for subsidy and they'll push the kids to Medicaid, okay? There's not a lot of ways around that. Uh, so that's how the system works. So again, it's a case-by-case -case basis, guys. I just want to try and keep this stuff simple. And then one other note, you know, I get these calls all the time. You know, my, my friend Bob, he lives down the street and he's paying, you know, 40 bucks a month for insurance and his deductible is $50 and, you know, these unicorn plans, they are real, okay? There is something called cost sharing. When your income is under 250% federal poverty level, okay, and that's why I highlighted 250%, you could potentially qualify for cost sharing, which means they will take plans that are rated as silver level plans on the marketplace, and they will lower the deductibles and the out-of-pockets and oftentimes the co-pays of those plans. So for instance, let's say Blue Cross in Illinois, this, a silver level plan has a $3,500 deductible. Well, if you're making like 140% federal poverty level, the government might lower that deductible all the way down to $100, okay, and lower the max out of pocket down from $8,000 to, you know, $500, okay, because not only do you qualify for government assistance on a premium with the subsidy, but also cost sharing, meaning your cost should you have to use the plan come down. I will go through these numbers uh, with you guys if I'm on a phone call with you. Um, and, and, but I'm trying to give you kind of a high level overview. So again, call me anytime. I'm always on my cell at 708-566-6589. Uh, I like to keep this stuff simple, guys. Um, and I'm always available with any questions. So please reach out. I appreciate you.